want to agree more. Uh, um, uh, Holly Cardins. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a question for each group, if that's okay, and I will be quick and it's okay to take all the questions together, I don't mind. Um, uh, first of all, just to follow on from what the Irish Deaf Society were saying in response to Alice Murray Higgins, um, you cite the forthcoming DPO coalition report, which will highlight that 24% of disabled people have difficulties using their right to vote and 55% have difficulty contacting um, local representatives. That's obviously extremely concerning. So I'm just wondering if you could outline concrete actions that we can individually take as public representatives and that we can push for as a, as a committee. Um, you also mentioned the under-resourcing of ISL supports. Um, I've been seeking updates from public bodies on their compliance with the ISL Act. Um, so I'm just wondering if you can elaborate on areas where ISL needs are not being met and um, elaborate further. Um, and for the National Platform of Self-Advocates, um, thank you, Joe, for your opening statement and for taking a stance on participation in all forms of decision-making. You highlight the need for all public processes to be accessible and how they're organised. And like others, I was taken by your point that you're only allowed to participate in storytelling and not in decision-making. Um, so I'm just wondering if you can discuss this further and how we can meaningfully include people with intellectual disabilities. Um, and then for, for Leap, for, for Deirdre and Rachel, um, thanks for your contribution and working to highlight the vital role that, that families play. Um, your points in increasing employment rights among people with intellectual disabilities is incredibly important. Um, you mentioned examples um, internationally and you know, there's the, the project RISE in, in the US. Um, I wonder if you could expand on what was involved in that project um, and the types of structures or programmes that we could put in place here. Um, as one of your recommendations, you also mentioned the importance of creating inclusive neighbourhoods. So I'm just wondering if you could outline kind of the real significance of this and how we can foster these types of supportive communities. Um, you also just, I'm curious, you talked about the optimal age um, for employment um, being 13 years. I'm just wondering if you could elaborate on the reason for that particular age out of curiosity. Thank you. To Holly's points and to Emer's points and the outstanding point that Sean made. So uh, maybe will we start with Joe? Uh, thank you, Conor. Um, it's very, very important that that um, the, the that people with disabilities are 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 are, are trained up early. For for working outside in in, 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 in in the community. And I think for um, in private care and such an organizations like them, they are very, very important. And I think maybe they should be linked to, they should go in and talk to schools about the service they provide for people that's leaving school and to have, have them start at a young age. Okay. Thank you, uh, Elaine, and uh, from the Deaf Society. I'd like to respond to Holly's question in how we can improve government in the next 12 months. What can the government do to help things improve? We need core funding provided to the Irish Deaf Society in order for us to carry out research around deaf people's lived experience. <coughs> ISL support can mean supporting people who'd like to be involved in political life, campaigning. There needs to be funding there for that. They're the two areas. They're the two comments I've left to make. Okay. Uh, John? There were so many questions from the, the last three uh, representatives. It's difficult to capture them all, so apologies if we don't uh, reply and we can maybe follow up. But just in response, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah, in response to uh, uh, Sean's point in relation to employment. Um, uh, we have started a, a significant deaf career project with um, Dormant Accounts Fund 
funds uh, funding and it became very clear that there was no exact sign for a career there's one for a job and that in its own right I think can explain quite a lot the project is going very well but one uh, UK precedent I think that I'd like to the committee to focus on is the access to work scheme and in the UK they provide interpreters for working people for their entire working life there's a net return to the exchequer for that expense and it elevates deaf people into positions of management in the UK. We would love to see a scheme like that investigated and implemented in Ireland. Thank Good you. Point. Okay, uh, Rachel. Or yeah, Rachel. I'd like to answer, thank you Chair, um, some of um, Senator, um, Senator Holly Cairns, I'm sorry, have I got your name correct? Thank you. Gardens, yeah. um, some of Senator Cairns' questions in relation to RISE specifically, and also to touch on uh, uh, Senator Canna's um, questions previously. So RISE uh, is uh, an organisation that has a really great history. They've actually been over and presented at our own National Disability Authority. And um, what they and other supported employment organizations like Inclusion Alberta in Alberta, Canada have found is that supported employment is the way to go, that the type of uh, employment support projects or initiatives we have traditionally had here for people with intellectual disabilities and autism, what are commonly known as developmental disabilities in uh, North America, um, don't necessarily provide the right types of support uh, on the job. So supported employment can assist an employer, for example, to um, look at a job that isn't already being done in an organization and to create a new job that doesn't exist. Maybe they might go into a plant or a factory or a warehouse and see that there's a particular task that isn't being done and that they would kind of carve a new role for a person to go in and take on, obviously for uh, full payment uh, with full uh, terms and conditions provided. So we mentioned RISE. We also want to mention Inclusion Alberta, who LEAP has um, taken families. We've, we've done st study tours around the world. And we've taken families to um, countries and, and organizations that are doing really extraordinary work, actually, towards the full inclusion of people with disabilities. And many of them are, are family-based organizations. So Inclusion Alberta, if you wanted to uh, look at them, they have... Um, uh, a Rotary Employment Partnership where they work with Rotarians, um, business people and the like in community and they don't use job coaches. They place uh, people with intellectual disabilities in open employment using the Rotary Club as their main partner. So there's no job coach. Um, there is support provided by an inclusion facilitator but there's no job coach. It's extraordinarily successful. So they leverage the support of the community and the business partners in community to place people in jobs. And the, the workers are, as we know, extremely loyal, uh, extremely good at timekeeping. Um, and we've, when I say as we know, I mean LEAP has spent time. We've been to Alberta, I think, three occasions at this stage. And we've spent time uh, with these projects, with these initiatives to really learn what is best in employment practice for people with intellectual disability. Why age 13? Um, that is the typical, the normative age that most of us, all of us probably on this call got our part-time job, first part-time job. I know I had mine when I was 11, all those years ago back in England, I had a paper round. And, um, you know, many of us um, started work, didn't we, at age 11, 12, 13, 14. And today, hopefully our own children, if we're parents, um, started work around that time. Now it's got a little later with the 
pandemic and so on, it's probably not happened at all, or if it has, not in the same way. So, you know, as always with everything in LEAP, we recommend that young people and children with disabilities do what their peers are doing at the same age and stage that they are doing them. And when we say peers, we don't mean other people with the same diagnosis. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we have to bring it to a close to the um, National Platform for self advocacy to the Irish Deaf Society, and to LEAP uh, for coming before us and to giving me a, a, the thought-provoking discussion.